In 1522, Catalina Suarez finally arrived in New Spain, excited to see her beloved husband after three years apart. Soon after her long-awaited arrival, however, her excitement was deflated. She immediately learned her husband, Hernán Cortés, had been having an affair with his enslaved indigenous translator, Doña Marina, who was often called La Malenche. And worse, the two had a child together. No matter, Catalina was determined to repair the relationship and assume her rightful position as consort to the governor of New Spain. Three months later, Catalina was dead of reported natural causes. But did you know the evidence actually suggests that Catalina Suarez's death was far more sinister than the records would have you believe? Let's fix that. Hello, I'm Shayla Fontaine, and you're listening to History Fix, where I discuss lesser-known true stories from history you won't be able to stop thinking about. This is my second-ever mini-fix, and thank you to my OG biggest fan, Natalie, for coming up with mini-fix. Brilliant. I was saying mini-sode last time, which is so not as good. So I have another mini-fix for you after this week's episode about Hernán Cortés' conquest of Tenochtitlan and the Aztec Empire. Because I had a tantalizing little piece of the story left over, I wasn't able to elaborate on during the full episode. And also, I just really wanted to use the term mini-fix, if I'm being honest. So I alluded to this a couple times during episode 22 about Tenochtitlan. And if you want this to really make sense, you should go back and listen to that one first. But I will try my best to sum it up enough for this to halfway stand on its own, too. Hernán Cortés was a Spanish explorer and conquistador who traveled to the Caribbean when he was 19 years old and helped Diego Velázquez take over Cuba. Also in Cuba was another conquistador named Juan Suárez Marqueda. In 1512, just after they conquered Cuba, Juan's sister Catalina Suarez Marqueda arrived in Cuba. So Cortez and Juan are conquistador buddies, and now here's Juan's sister. Naturally, Cortez marries Catalina in 1514, and they apparently have a very happy marriage. If you listened to the Tenochtitlan episode, you know Cortez takes off to Mexico in 1519, defying the orders of Governor Velazquez in order to defeat the Aztecs and claim that land for Spain. So that had to have been tough for Catalina. Cortez is seen as a traitor, a mutineer. When Velazquez sends troops to bring him back to Cuba, he sneak attacks them in the night, imprisoning the commander and taking the troops back to Tenochtitlan with him. This is borderline treason. I can't imagine Catalina was treated with much respect or esteem back in Cuba. But no matter, Cortez' plan is miraculously successful. He defeats Tenochtitlan in 1521 with the help of hundreds of thousands of indigenous allies who all wanted to see the brutal Aztec empire fall. And just like that, his name is cleared. Spain is delighted he's made governor of New Spain and begins building Mexico City on top of the ruins of Tenochtitlan. The capital of this new colony at the time is Coyacan, which today is basically a borough of Mexico City. But back then, it was like the it spot, the center of New Spain. So by 1522, things are somewhat established, and Catalina finally travels to Coyacan to be reunited with her husband. She has to be stoked. She went from disgraced wife of a mutinous traitor to consort of the governor of New Spain. It's quite a step up, and I'm sure she's excited to finally reap the benefits of her newfound title. But when she arrives, she's met with Cortez' dirty little secret. For the last three years, he's enjoyed an extramarital relationship with an enslaved indigenous woman known as La Malinche, and they even have a child together, Martine. Actually, just side note, Cortez had quite a few children with quite a few different women. La Malinche was not his only affair. In fact, he had 11 children with six different women. Four of them were with indigenous women, and the other seven were with Spanish women. 
He did not have any children with Catalina. However, she had remained childless. So Catalina has to be devastated. I mean, how could you not be? La Malenche is quickly married off to another conquistador named Juan Jarmillo as a sort of consolation, I guess. And Catalina just tries to put it behind them. She has a loving relationship with Cortez somehow. I really don't know how. Remember, this is the guy who was described as ruthless, haughty, mischievous, and quarrelsome by his secretary. But they had been apart for three years, so I don't know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, I guess. According to historian Jose Maria Gonzalez, Cortez organized a party at their house three months after Catalina joined him in Coyacan, and everything went downhill fast. Catalina and Cortez got into a huge argument in front of all the guests, and she stormed out and went to her bedroom. Because, I mean, you can try to bury that type of hurt, but eventually it's going to come out. So it came out that night. Cortez stayed at the party, but later went to find Catalina in her room, where he, according to him, found her out of breath, and she died in his arms. Catalina was known to suffer from asthma, and because of this and Cortez' account of that night, the official record stated that she died of natural causes. But there are a lot of key details here that raise suspicions of foul play. According to witnesses who saw her body, she had bruises around her neck, which is not, to my knowledge, a symptom of asthma. I'm not a doctor, but just saying. Soon after, Cortez buried Catalina's body, I mean immediately, and he would not allow her relatives to view her remains first. Witnesses also reported that her body was covered in urine when it was discovered. I'm not really sure what to make of this. It could have resulted from a natural death. When someone dies, all of their muscles relax and any excrement is usually released. So if it was her urine, this checks out. I wish I knew like where the urine was though. If it's like all over her body, like if it's on her head, it's clearly not her urine. And if that was the case, something truly sick and horrific obviously went down. I don't have any more details on that, unfortunately though. So this is super sketch. We have an extramarital affair, a domestic dispute, a sudden and unexpected death, Witnesses reporting bruising around her neck, and then she's hastily buried before anyone can draw any conclusions other than asthma. Juan Suarez, Catalina's brother, is so enamored of Cortez, he doesn't even bat an eye, doesn't raise any questions. He's just like, asthma, yeah, that checks out. But of course, he benefits from this. He gets all sorts of opportunities in high-ranking positions by maintaining his relationship with Cortez, the mighty governor of New Spain. Her mother, however, does speak out about it a few years later. She takes Cortez to court twice, actually. The first time accusing him of murdering her daughter, and the second trial is to try to get marital property. So I don't know if that's like Catalina's dowry or just like her personal belongings or assets or what, I'm not sure. But Mama Suarez is the only one brave enough to point the finger of blame at Cortez officially. She's calling him out with accusations of homicide. But of course, of course, this goes nowhere. Cortez continues to maintain his innocence, that he just found Catalina that way, that she died of natural causes, complications from asthma. And that was that. It never amounts to anything more than scandalous rumors. But I find it very interesting. You know, bruises around the neck. To me, that suggests strangulation. And Cortez had reported that he found her out of breath and that she died in his arms, alluding to complications from asthma. But out of breath? Died in his arms? Could that not also be of manual strangulation? Cortez was a womanizer. He clearly showed no great respect for women. I keep coming back to this very public argument, this fight they had at the party. I could see that really hurting the ego of a man like Cortez to have his wife stand up to him, speak out against him in front of their guests. I'm a bit of a true crime fan, so I've heard a lot of stories about murder. (laughs) And to me, this sounds like a textbook case of an egotistical narcissist killing his wife in a fit of rage. It happens all the time in the true crime world. And strangulation Yeah, that sounds about right, too. Strangulation is a very personal, rage-driven crime. 
it takes around three minutes to strangle someone. That may sound quick, but set a timer for three minutes and then imagine squeezing someone's neck for that long, watching them die right in front of you. Actually, don't do not do that. That is so creepy. What is wrong with me? All I'm saying is if you listen to enough true crime stories, this one fits the pattern. It's not always the husband, but it's usually always the husband. And a husband like Cortez, he has wife strangler written all over him. Power and position and influence go a long way to help a man like Cortez avoid answering for his crimes. I like to think, to hope, that today it would be different, that Catalina and her mother would get the justice they deserved. Thanks so much for listening to this mini fix. And thank you, Natalie, for coining the term mini fix. I love it. Check back in on Sunday for your regularly scheduled full length episode. It's a super exciting one, so don't miss it. And be sure to check out my Instagram at History Fix Podcast for some images that go along with this story.